Hello and welcome back to the Simon Says Minigame Tutorial Ramp 5 Part 3 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? And since the last video, there's also three new patrons that have joined by the name of Linda, Misha and Jiblyfish. So thank you so much for joining and supporting my channel and my work. Thank you so much. So in this part, we're going to continue by first of all, creating the set difficulty function that we are calling whenever the user is pressing on either the left or right arrow button inside of our Simon Says menu. And since that is going to be a Python function, we're going to go back up into our init Python block right here and create a few empty lines underneath this other function like so and then go inwards once in the annotations and then we're going to say def set difficulty and since this function takes one parameter that we have called button we're going to say button like so and then inside of this function we are first of all going to set the current difficulty variable to a global variable so that we can change it inside of this function. So for that we're going to say global current difficulty like so. So now depending on which button that the user has pressed on, which could be either the left or the right arrow button, we're going to switch the difficulty to the next one or the previous one. And for that we first of all going to need to check which button the user has pressed on. So for that, we're going to create an if statement. So we're going to say if button is equal to, and we can start by checking the right button. So we're going to say is equal to right, like so. And then inside of this if statement, we're going to set the current difficulty variable, so this one right here, to be equal to the next one in the difficulties list. Because as you might remember, the difficulties list contains all the different difficulties that the user can pick from. And the current difficulty variable contains one of these values depending on what the user has picked. So to do that, we're going to say current difficulty is equal to, and then we're going to refer to the difficulties list. So we're going to say difficulties and then two square brackets so that we can pick a value from this list. And to get the correct value from the list, we're going to search for the index position of the current difficulty. And then we're going to add one to that index value to get the next item in the list. So for that, we're going to say difficulties and then dot index. So index is a method that you can use to search for an item instead of a list, for example, and then get back its index position in the list as the return value. And in this case, we're searching inside of the difficulties list for the current difficulty value. So we're going to write current difficulty, like so. And then we're going to say outside of these two run brackets, plus one. So now the current difficulty variable is going to contain the value of the next item in the list. Now there's only one problem with this code that we're going to run into sooner or later and that is if we imagine that the user keeps pressing on the right arrow button until they reach the very last item in the difficulties list and then they press on the right button again to try and access an item that comes after the last item we are then going to get an error on the screen because we don't have any more items to the right of the last item so to prevent that we're going to add another condition to this if statement and this condition is going to check if the current difficulty in the difficulties list has an index value that is less than the last index. Because if it is, then that means that we still have more items to the right that we can reveal. So for that, we're going to say and difficulties dot index. And then we're going to search for the index of the current difficulty. So we're going to say current difficulty and then we're going to check if this index position is less than the total length of the difficulties list so for that we're going to say is less than len and then difficulties like so but since the first item in a list always starts at the index value of zero we're also going to have to say minus one because our difficulties list has three items in it the first item starts at the index value of 0, and the last one ends at the index value of 2. 
So if we imagine that the current difficulty variable is currently set to the value hard, which is the last item in the difficulties list, then this index method is going to return the value two. So we are then checking if two is less than the length of the difficulties list, which is three, and then minus one, which is two. So if two is less than two, which it is not, then this is not going to run because we are at the last item in the list and cannot go any further to the right. So now that we have done that, we're going to continue with the left button as well. So we're going to select this whole if statement like so, and then press Control Shift D. And then we're just going to rename the if statement to be an elif statement instead. So we're going to say L, so it says elif. And then we're going to switch the right to say left instead. And now instead of checking if the current index is less than the total length of the difficulties list, we're instead going to check if it's more than zero, because if it is, then we can keep going to the left. So with that, we're going to say is more than and then zero, like so. And then down here, where we are setting the current difficulty to a new value, we're going to say minus one instead of plus one. Now, the last thing we're going to do is to make sure that we are restarting the interaction to make sure that the changes that we have done to the current difficulty variable is going to be reflected inside of the game. So with that, we're going to create a new line and then go inwards once in the indentations and then say rempy.restart interaction. Like so. Now, before we can go ahead and launch the game to see how everything works like, we're going to have to do a few corrections in the code. And that is namely down here in the Simon Says menu. So for all of the different file paths that we've given to the display walls, such as the background image for this frame and the image buttons down here, we're going to have to specify that they are inside of the UI folder in the images folder so that Rempy is going to find them correctly. So for that, we're just going to say UI and then slash. And then we'll do the same thing for the other file paths as well. So we're going to copy that and then paste that there, like so. And then lastly, we're going to make sure that we are resizing the image buttons to be half of their original size, which I forgot to do earlier on. So we're going to say at half size. And then I'm going to copy paste this for all of the other image buttons as well. Like so. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like. So here inside of the game, we can see that the first thing that shows up is the minigame menu and here in the middle we have the difficulty selection with the left and right arrow buttons and then we have the play and the quit button so now if we try to press on the arrow buttons we can see that we can select the different difficulties and if we try to go too far to the left with the arrow button we can see that nothing really happens and if we go too far to the right nothing really happens there either so we know that that is working correctly. And now let's see what happens if we press on the play button. We then switch over to the mini game screen where we have the different colored buttons. So now that we know that that is working correctly, let's go back into the script and do some more coding. So now we're going to continue by making sure that the different colored buttons inside of our mini game screen can be lit up according to the currently active pattern. And for that, we're going to need to create some new variables they're going to be named according to the different colors. And then we're going to set these variables to either true or false, depending on if the button should be lit or unlit. So for that, we're going to go back down into the start label, and then we're going to create a new line just underneath this last variable. So the first variable is going to control the red button. So we're going to call this one red button lit. And this is going to be equal to false as the initial value. And then we'll duplicate this line and rename this to blue instead of red, like so. And then we'll duplicate again and make the green button as well. And then the last one, which is going to be yellow. And now we're going to go back up into the Samuels screen right here. And then here we're going to check each of the variables that we just created to see if they are true or false 
and then we're going to swap the images for these image buttons accordingly. So let's go ahead and start with the red button. So we're going to create a new line underneath the background image. And then we're going to create an if statement. So we're going to say if red button lit like so. And then we'll create a new line. So as long as the red button lit variable is true, then we're going to make sure that the image button is going to show the lit version of the image. So for that, we can copy paste this image button that has the red button. And then we'll paste it inside of this if statement, like so. And then we're just going to remove the percent %s and say lit, like so. So now the image for this image button uses the lit version instead. And then we'll just add an else statement that is going to use the other image button that we had before. So we're going to create a new line and then go inwards once in the annotations. And then we're going to say elif not red button lit, like so. And then we're just going to make sure that we are indenting the line underneath, which has the normal version of the red image button, like so. So now if the red button lit variable is true, then the image button is going to use the lit version of the image. But if it's not true, we're going to use the normal version of the image button, which has the idle and the hover state. And now we'll just go ahead and do the same thing for the other buttons as well. So we're going to create a new line underneath this image button and then say if blue button lit like so. And then we'll copy paste this blue image button and then paste it inside of this if statement. And then we'll just change the percent %s again to say lit like so. And then we'll create a new line underneath this and say elif not blue button lit and then we'll indent the line underneath and then we'll do the next one so we're going to say if green button lit and then we'll copy paste this image button into this if statement like so and again change the percent s to say lit instead and then we'll go ahead and create an elif statement. So we're going to say elif not green button lit and then indent the line underneath. And then the last one. If yellow button lit and then copy paste this and then change percent s to say lit and then elif not yellow button lit and then indent this line like so now for this to work correctly we're going to need to create a function that is going to control which of these variables should be true or false according to the currently active pattern and for that we're going to need some new variables as well so we're going to scroll back down into the start label right here and underneath the last variable, we're going to create a new line. So the first variable is going to help us to keep a track of which button that we are currently lighting up in the current button pattern. And that variable we're going to call current button index. And this is going to be equal to zero as the initial value. Now we also want to make sure that the user can't interrupt a pattern while it's still playing by pressing on one of the colored buttons. So for that, we're going to create a new variable, which we are going to call input ready, like so. And this variable is going to be equal to true or false, depending on if the user can start pressing on the buttons or not. So for that, we're going to say is equal to false as the initial value. And the last variable we're going to create is going to help us to keep a track of the amount of correct buttons that the user has pressed in the current pattern. So for that, we're going to say correct picks. And this is going to be equal to zero as the initial value. Now, I know that this might be a little bit of an awkward place to end this video, but we're going to have to continue and create the function in the next part. If you are enjoying this series so far, consider pressing the like button and leaving a comment down below to let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching 
and I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.